the whole purpose to discipline yourself in that manner, to resist uh, uh, the injustice and not inflict the violence yourself um, was going to help us to bring that injustice to the surface. Charles, perhaps you might take us back to the day, because I think a lot of people in this country, if you say Selma, they'll know broadly what people mean. But, but give us a bit of the history. What was the, the road to Selma? Well, the road to Selma was from uh, Birmingham. And uh, as you know, Birmingham gave us the right to public accommodations, the rights. And Dr. King and his strategy, and with the uh, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, decided that uh, we need to make sure that we could vote. And democracy, voting runs the democracy, the people. So uh, they were using uh, things that, that uh, restricted people from voting. And uh, the Constitution, after the Emancipation Proclamation, gave citizens of the United States the right to vote. But the states were controlling that right and using things to disenfranchise people to vote. So Selma was about um, the voting rights of people that uh, were not restricted. Restriction meaning they had um, literacy tests, they had uh, uh, things that you had to ask how many bubbles in the bar and a uh, bar of soap, how many jelly beans in the bar. And they did that uh, intentionally to eliminate, uh, especially African Americans. So they were trying to stop people voting. Yeah, the Voting Rights Act was to correct that in 1965. And Dr. King understood it had to be corrected from the federal government. And Bernice, did Dr. King know what he'd be facing? Because it becomes known as Bloody Sunday. These guys are protesting peacefully, but but he he must have known what they were going what they were facing when they, they walked down that road. As you know, Dr. King was not there on Bloody Sunday. Um, so before Bloody Sunday, there was a uh, uh, and a, a murder of a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Lee Jackson in Marion, Alabama, uh, where my mother is actually from. Uh, they were demonstrating at night because they had, there was a gentleman locked up that they were going to the jail uh, because they wanted to protest and, and for his release. And uh, during that night walk, March, excuse me, Jimmy Lee Jackson was killed. So the suggestion was made, we need to first, we need to march to, to the courthouse, take his body to the courthouse. <laughs> I mean, not the courthouse, to the state house where George Wallace is. Uh, so that they see what this is doing to black people. So as a result, this whole effort to organize around voting rights occurred to march from Selma to, to Montgomery. Uh, and on that uh, Sunday, John Lewis, who was a part of SNCC, but was not marching representing SNCC. He was marching as an individual that needs to be clear to people because SNCC did not, uh, opted not to participate. Um, and Hosea Williams, who represented my father's organization, started out on that march on that bridge. And of course, that's when they faced uh, those, um, those law enforcement officers, state troopers, and white vigilantes, really. Um, and yes, they knew what, I mean, they were facing threats and abuse, you know, and attacks and beatings all the time in the movement. Uh, when they were fighting for public accommodations in Birmingham, as you remember, the young people were attacked with dogs and water hoses and billy clubs. So they knew that they would be faced uh, with potential violence, but that's why nonviolence was introduced early on in the movement so that people could demonstrate uh, through their physical, their, excuse me, their resistance, putting their bodies on the line being properly trained how to protect themselves so that they don't inflict violence because nonviolence does not believe in inflicting a blow um, because it wants to bring out into the open the injustice that's happening, you know, it, right before them. And so they knew that morning that they were going to have to be very disciplined as they wa walked across that bridge and, and face those authorities. Was that a difficult argument, do you think, to make sometimes that there must have been people who wanted to fight fire with fire, to, to, to fight back. I mean, I can't believe that was an easy conversation for, for Dr. King to say, you know what, the way this is going to work is we're going to stand there, we're going to show our resilience, but we're not going to fight back. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was one of the, 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 the tensions between the younger, much younger, because my father was still young, the much younger people. But he had, he had an, a way about him because he believed in it wholeheartedly of getting you know, young people to buy into it. And if they didn't adhere, they didn't kick them out of the movement. They said, you have to go do something else, but you can't be a part of the demonstrations. But because the whole purpose to discipline yourself in that manner, to resist 
uh, uh, the injustice and not inflict the violence yourself um, was going to help us to bring that injustice to the surface and win more people into our cause. But I know, Charles, you wanted to add to that. No, absolutely. You, you, that's the purpose of nonviolence. You're, you're dealing with the conscience of people. And uh, when people see you fighting back and throwing Molotov cocktails at the police, you're going to lose them. So Dr. King was and, and successful. And uh, Bloody Sunday brought uh, all types of people from all around, religions, et cetera, back to Selma because he said, if you're fighting for justice, you belong in Selma. So if they'd have been fighting the police, they could not have, not have attracted that type of people from all disciplines and, and diverse people and all races. And it, and it was the, I wanted to say it was the impetus for President Johnson finally calling for Congress to, to go ahead um, and work towards passing the Voting Rights Act. Before then, he was having a struggle <laughs> uh, because he had just signed into law the Civil Rights Act and felt like, you know, these the Southern segregationists who were in uh, Congress would not tolerate another piece of legislation that was going to continue um, to grant equality and, and freedom in this way to the Black community. But because of what happened, the whole nation was you know, arrested by all of that brutality that was happening right before their eyes on television. And so he made that wonderful speech. And at the end of his speech, uh, President Johnson said, we shall overcome, really? which was the anthem of the movement, yes. And so it kind of worked then, Charles, in that sense, that 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 that, that, that approach bore immediate fruit. There was, a, there was a positive change as a result of this. Absolutely, it always works, but the discipline is, is what's key. And um, um, we say nonviolence is a discipline of your emotions. You have to look at what is your goal and what will bring people of goodwill uh, to your goal of, of, across racial, ethnic, ethnic and cultural uh, lines. So therefore, you're talking to people's consciousness as you, in your behavior, you're exhibiting what is wrong and you're showing a model that uh, you're not defending or trying to overcome the government or throw out the government. Yes. It's an amazing, it's an amazing moment in time and uh, it's an amazing lesson for lots of people, I'm sure.